Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 31st Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Norbert Munakani. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the third first Sunday in ordinary time, and the Lord challenges us on how we should love, love God, and love one another. For the times that we have failed to express our love and to love those that need our love, let us ask God for pardon and for mercy. I confess to so my God, God and to my brothers and sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, my Virgin, all angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins and lead us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on and earth, peace, peace to people of goodwill. Good we, we praise you. We bless you. We, bless you. we adore you. you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy, the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son by keeping his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, that your days may be prolonged. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in the land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love, I love you, Lord, Lord my, my strength. strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my savior. I love, I love you, Lord, Lord my, my strength. strength. My God, 
my rock where I take refuge, my shield, my saving strength, my stronghold, I cry out, praise be the Lord, and see, I am saved from my foes. I, I love, love you, Lord, Lord my, my strength. strength. The Lord lives and blessed be my rock. May the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord gives great victories to his king and shows merciful love for his anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, priests of the former covenant were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office, but Christ hold his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, unstained, separated from sinners, exalted above the heavens. He has no need like those high priests to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did this once for all when he offered up himself. Indeed, the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, but the word of the oath which came later than the law appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. If a man loves me, he will keep my word, says the Lord, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, one of the scribes came up to Jesus and asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. And the scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, that there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength and to love one's neighbor as oneself is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he wisely understood, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any question. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The readings of today invite us to love. But what kind of love? It is not the love as the world understands it, whereby we take advantage of each other for our own interest, but the love of God whereby we seek the good of the other for the sake of the other. It is agape love. Love that is not just a word or an idea, but love that is a way of life. In the first reading, the Shema Israel, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, is the profession of the Jewish faith 
That is this, at the same time a call to obedience. The consequence of this obedience of faith is to love God with a total and unconditional love. In the past few years of my priesthood, I have presided over several funerals. Sometimes it takes death for one to bring about family reconciliation. Over the years, I have heard many urologies and I have often asked myself the question, I wonder if the deceased person has heard even half of what, what was said about him or about her in their lifetime. Why does it take a tragedy to happen before we show our appreciation of one another? We often leave it too late to love, and then we are full of regrets. We wait until it is too late to tell or to show others that we love them. We often leave it too late to mend a quarrel, too late to enjoy health or the gift of our children or the gift of our parents. It seems that if we are going to be on time, we need to act now and respond to that call that, that, call that Jesus calls us to, the call to love. Plato, a Greek philosopher, once asked his students to picture in their life a triangle and to place at the base of that triangle everything that they valued, everything that they thought was important and not worth. Once that was done, Plato encouraged his students to raise even those things that they valued to the top of the triangle. Now, of course, as they pushed things up, there was less and less space. And so things that were less important we had no place in that triangle. And finally, when they reached the very top of that triangle, there was no room but only for one thing. That thing, Plato says, was the one most important thing. In the first reading, we hear how the sons and daughters of Israel receive instructions as to how they should live and behave towards each other. After the painful but liberating journey out of Egypt, Moses reminded them, and he reminded them and all the Israelites that they must be true to God of freedom and of liberation. The whole purpose of Exodus is to be free from slavery and oppression. It is to be able to live as God's people. And as a result, they are urged not to be a society of enslavement and oppression that they themselves experienced when they were in Egypt. Instead, they are to form this society which will be the model of all the nations. This new society will be marked by the worship of the one true God, the God of love, the God of justice, the God of compassion. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These words of Moses to the people you have become a traditional Jewish daily prayer called the Shema. This prayer is a summon to all believers to make God and his concern at the center and the apex of our life and our mission. God wants us to love him with all our hearts. What does that mean? It means to hand him the control of all the choices and feelings. It also means maintaining an undivided heart, a heart where there is no room for anything else, where there is no room for idols. He wants us to love him with all our soul. And what does, what does that mean? The soul in the Bible is equivalent to life. No time can be spent in disagreement with the plan of the Lord. And the rabbis of Israel taught that the true Israelite loves God always 
even when God takes his or her life. He wants us to love him with all our strength, which means carrying out God's plan with all our energy, with all our ability. For the Israelites, it also meant sacrificing their material goods and possessions as proof of their attachment to the faith. For a long time, the Israelites conceived their relationships with the Lord in terms of worship. And Israel thought she could win God's favor by offering him sacrifices and burnt offerings of animals and first fruits of the harvest. But don't we all? Yet this is not the way the Lord wants his people to manifest his love to him. He says in Isaiah 1, 10 to 20 and in Amos 5, 21 to 25. What do I care, says the Lord, for your endless sacrifices? I am fed up with your oblations. I grow sick with your incense, your new moons, your Sabbaths, your meetings. I can no longer bear. I hate new moons and I hate appointed feasts. They burden me. When you stretch out your hands, I will close my eyes. The more you pray, the more I refuse to listen. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Give the fatherless their right and defend the widow. That's what the Lord calls those who follow him to. And Jesus defines that same vision of God's kingdom in terms of loving God and of loving neighbor. He gives us a new understanding of the new, of the Old Testament. One that is rooted in radical love rather than in meticulous observances of the law. Jesus would later expand this notion of a neighbor to include not only three classic outsiders, the widow, the orphan, and the stranger, but also everyone, anyone who is excluded from total acceptance. And we have the example of the Samaritan parable that would redefine who the neighbor was and challenge Israelites even more deeply in terms of their attitude and their actions and their relationships with the outsiders and those who are not part of their group. Through the parable, Jesus would push the boundaries of acceptance, inclusion, and love to the limits in identifying himself with the marginalized and the outcast. Jesus would challenge them with a radical new way of seeing and acting and relating. Dear friends, the early Christians understood the significance of being fundamentally countercultural in how they lived, how they related, how they shared resources with the disadvantaged. They embraced a life of faith, a life of hope and love. And in contrast to the pagan counterparts, they reached out to others beyond their borders. Similarly, we are challenged to be kinder, to be more inclusive, to be more caring under God's rule. The kingdom, the kingdom of God, the kingdom that Jesus gives, and this vision that he gives guides us as we endeavor to be a community that serves as an antidote to the politics of fear and the economy of exclusion in our society. May we, we have been shown immeasurable love in Christ, reach out in the spirit of neighborliness to the unloved, the excluded, the disadvantaged, the dispossessed, to bring them to the table of the Lord. To love is not optional, as most of us would think. It is a commandment, which carries a lot of consequences. And if we read John 13, 34, 
It says, our Lord Jesus Christ said, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. And it also identifies who we are. If we love one another, everyone will know that you are my disciples. From John 13, 35. So love is not based on conditions or conveniences. For some people, their love is seasonal. The season of abundance when things are going fine. But the litmus test for love is to love when it is difficult to do so. Today, our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the assignment to examine our love proportions. Do we love by mouth, by writings, and text messages, or do we practice and actualize love by our selflessness? Indeed, love surpasses everything and it conquers everything. Yes, love is the foundation and the fulfillment of the law. This free, total, and unconditional love finds its fulfillment in Jesus Christ, in obedience to the Father and for the humankind. He offered himself on the cross once for all as a perfect and pleasing sacrifice to God. Thus, he has become a high priest, priest par excellence, and priest and who lasts forever. May he teach us to love and to serve him in our brothers and sisters, especially those who are excluded and the vulnerable. May God bless you. Having shared the word of God together, let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the generous love of God, our Father, let us confidently pray for our needs and the needs of the people everywhere. For the Church and the Synod on Synodality, we pray for the Pope, Bishops, Priests, and Faithful, that they may be led by the Spirit in discerning the will of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in South Africa, we pray that the local government elections will be free, fair, and peaceful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the environment, we pray that we will gain a greater appreciation of the beauty and diversity of all God's creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in need, we call to mind anyone we know who might need our prayers at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and for all who are in need, that during mental and physical suffering, they may find consolation in your healing presence. Show your mercy as you close wounds, cure illnesses, make broken bodies whole and free downcast spirits. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all who have died, that they may enjoy the promise of eternal happiness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. 
Father, accept our prayers and answer them, we pray, through Jesus, your Son, and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. This is God's prayer. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and of all God's holy church. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we, have, we live and move and have our being, and while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of us. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Son in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these sacred mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, his spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Booty our Archbishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, and they are passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our oh, Father, Lord, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. 
His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remain in peace. Our Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.